So my personal approach to uh, AGI is a quite theoretical one. So uh, when I was working in this company, um, I had some free time on the weekends and I was always you know, interested in the AGI problem. So, but I never had a good idea. So I started to think about it again. And um, then I realized that algorithmic information theory combined with, let's say, reinforcement learning, more precisely Bellman equations, um, is, in my opinion, the key of getting the foundations right. So um, I combined, in a sense, Occam's razor principle, AP course principle, and um, Bayes rule and uh, Turing machines. Um, well, sorry, I, I don't didn't combine it. It was Ray Solomonov who combined it into a universal scheme of induction. So this solves the induction and prediction problem. What I did then, I combined it with sequential decision theory. So the sequential decision theory is about making decisions, can be uncertain worlds, but you need to know um, the probability distribution um, or a model of your world. In complex environments, we don't have this model. So we have on the one hand, we have a universal theory of prediction, if you don't know anything about the world. On the other hand, we have a general theory of decision making, if we have a precise description of the world. But what we really need is an agent who is able to perform well in uncertain worlds. So I combine both theories, and um, since one theory is optimal um, for prediction in unknown worlds, and the other one optimal for making decisions in known worlds, the combination, it seemed plausible that this is an optimal agent um, in unknown worlds, and it turned out to be the case. So I have several theorems um, which uh, uh, confirm that. So I wrote a book in 2005. Um, much research has happened um, after that. Some small holes have poked, been poked into the theory, mostly by my own people, um, but then we fixed the hole. So, um, um, so um, what this theory does, it, it gives you a mathematical definition of intelligence, it's more or less unique, and you can turn this definition around and ask what is the most intelligent system relative to this definition. So if you trust this definition of intelligence, then you should also trust that this is the most intelligent agent. So we have this mathematical description now, and we can um, now analyze this. Um, interestingly, the philosophers were the first to pick that up because now they can discuss super rationality with a concrete mathematical model. Well, those philosophers who don't shy away from mathematics. Um, on the other hand, we have a gold standard, what we would like to achieve for practical AGI systems, and we can always gauge our practical uh, progress against this gold standard and can try to get as close as possible to it, or take this gold standard and approximate that, get more limited systems, which then run on current hardware, which we have also done. So we have developed a number of approximations. Um, um, honestly, it's only a small fraction um, of my group or uh, other people um, working on these approximations. Um, also, in parts, um, people at Google DeepMind um, work on that. Uh, it's only a small part of Google DeepMind. Mostly, they also jumped on the deep neural network bandwagon um, or initiated it even. Um, so, uh, first approximation was a purely theoretical one, which is computable um, even has optimal time complexity, but with a constant factor which is sort of beyond anything reasonable, so it's, it's, it's not practical. Although possibly one can make a practical system out of it. So Jürgen Schmidhuber had developed the optimal order problem solver and the Gödel machine who tried to sort of go um, um, in this direction. Um, but um, it is probably very hard. Um, then we have developed um, the first approximation which we have implemented on our current hardware. So where we replaced the learning part, which is the sort of Solomon induction, by standard data compressors. So there's a close relation between being able to compress data, being able to predict data, and understanding, and ultimately intelligence. So I have a website um, um, which shows, uh, it's called the Human Knowledge Compression Contest. So if you're able to compress uh, Wikipedia, 100 megabyte of it better than the current state of the art, you get um, a percentage of, of the price, which is 50,000 euro. Um, still going on for 11 years now. Um, so we just replaced incomputable Solomon induction by standard data compressors, um, which has been quite successful. And the planning part, so the decision part, uh, we have used Monte Carlo tree search methods, which many, many researchers use um, in, the, in the planning community. So after this first 
um, practical approximation. This is called Monte Carlo Tree Search um, IXC CTW model. Um, CTW stands for context tree weighting. It's a cool compression algorithm. Um, uh, my former PhD student, um, in collaboration with me, uh, has developed the compress and control algorithm. Um, the basic idea was that we want to keep the information theoretic aspect of learning, so the context tree weighting. The, the planning by Monte Carlo Tree Search um, uh, is still very slow and time consuming. Um, and we have replaced it by predicting the value function directly, which completely sidesteps um, the planning aspect. Um, the idea is similar to classical reinforcement learning, where if you have the Bellman equations and learn the value function directly, so temporal difference learning methods and Q-learning. But um, the, 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 the details are very different. So we still use compression techniques to represent uh, the posterior probabilities of returns, which then lead to the values. So the, the basic idea of predicting the value function directly is the same as model-free reinforcement learning many people use, it's very successful. But everything else is, is very different. In general, there are two parts which we have to approximate. One is the learning part. So we need better and better compressors, um, which motivated this human knowledge compression contest to make people aware of that, you know, if you work on data compressors, you actually work on intelligent systems, um, even if you're not aware of that. Um, and the other thing is the planning part, um, either to develop better planners or to circumvent it. And it's not so clear um, which approach um, will be more successful. If you circumvent it, um, it feels like that some problems are impossible or too hard to deal with. So imagine, or can you imagine you're playing chess by just learning a value function and then looking for the optimal action without any, um, 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 any look ahead? That's hard to imagine. I mean, that's not how human works. I mean, we have little look ahead, but very good heuristic value functions, but we do look ahead also. Um, best chess playing programs do a lot of look ahead. So these uh, model-free reinforcement learning methods, they completely sidestep the planning and the look ahead. And it doesn't seem plausible that this will work for some problems like you know, games where you need to plan. Um, there are some theoretical ways you could sort of you know, manage to, to side step this problem, but it's not so clear whether this will work. Um, yeah, I think these are the two areas um, which need attention. I mean, it's the learning part and the planning part, as has always been, but then in combination. It's also um, treating them separately will ultimately also be too limited. So even if you have sort of the optimal um, um, efficient um, predictor for practical purposes, um, and then you have an optimal planner, um, if you combine them, it will not, not be a most efficient system. So you can gain a lot of efficiency by looking at the problem um, in combination. Um, but it's a very hard issue to deal with, to optimize um, or find efficient algorithms for the combined problem. But that's what we ultimately um, should do.